trying to figure out, you know, with this guy, you know, why he's become an alcoholic, what was going on in his early childhood, how it had impacted him, and why he shouldn't drink, and so forth. And so that was the focus of the individual therapy sessions. So I had, I met with this guy three times a week uh, as his individual therapist while he was there for the month. And he was getting, it seemed to me, lots of insight about these issues, why he'd become an alcoholic, he had problems with his mother, he had authority issues. You could see how that impacted his feelings about his wife and that made him drink and uh, even more. And he could see why it had screwed up his life and why he shouldn't drink ever again. So he looked like a really good candidate for success, according to the supervisor at least. <laughs> I was a little dubious, but so I'll never forget, we, when he was uh, finished with his treatment, uh, I took him down to the bus, the Greyhound bus that was taken down to San Francisco where he lived. And he said goodbye and everything looked great. And <laughs> now the story, right? I think it was four days later, he's readmitted, totally intoxicated. And by the time he sobers up enough to talk about it, you know, I go to him and said, Jack, wasn't his real name, but Jack, what happened, you know? He said, you know, Dr. Marlatz, because that was, I had my PhD by then, so he called me Dr. Marlatz. He said, you know, you were very good at sort of helping me understand why I was an alcoholic and why it was screwing up my life and, you know, why I shouldn't drink, but you never said one goddamn word on how you're supposed to do that. And so what happened was the bus took me down to San Francisco into the Tenderloin District. The bus door opened, and it's right in front of a bar. You know, and I hadn't seen a bar or even seen any alcohol since the whole time I was in Napa State Hospital. There it was. So I just decided I better, I think I'll just go in and see what happens. So he went in and found himself having a drink and another drink and another drink. So it struck me at that point that relapse was something that was happening a lot, and yet nobody was even talking about it. So I go back to the treatment center mm -hmm. and I talk to the director. I said, why don't we realistically deal with this relapse issue because it happens so much and people aren't prepared. And he said, well, we don't really want to talk about relapse because it gives people permission to do it. We want everybody to be successful here. And if you start mm -hmm. talking about relapse and what might happen, you're going to over that line. 